Is that better? Now they should be able to hear us. All right. It looks like they can. It's very possible that they can now hear us. Are our levels going to be all right, or are they possibly super... They sh- our level you should be okay. Look at you. Look at you when you talk, and then yeah. look at when I talk. Uh huh. It looks. You're, ab- you're far. Looks like you're far louder than me, but eh, maybe not. It looks like we're about the same. Did we sound good? You, Do we need to be adjusted? They can tell us, and they will tell us. We can hear you. All's fine. You guys suck. Perfect. Uh, so it's okay. So everything's fine. My levels are fine. Great. Hey, everybody. All welcome right. to the stream. Welcome. All right. So I don't know how much time we're going to get out of this game. Uh-huh. This is a game we, I, I saw four minutes ago. Uh-huh. Called Super Flight. Yep. And, oh, my God. You did it. Oh, my God. I already crashed. You did it. So apparently, you get points for flying close to walls. Yes. You get more points for flying through holes and stuff. So, like, if you've ever seen those, like, <laughs> like Red Bull YouTube videos of people in flight suits flying down mountains, that's what this game is, and that's all this game is. <laughs> yeah, it's like a wingsuit simulator. You just kind of fly around in your wingsuit and try to get points. Then that's it, man. Portal. I went in some kind of portal. I can't see it. Portal means I'm blind. No, you just weren't facing the thing. This game is... One more thing. It's $3. That's true. This game is currently $3 on Steam. Oh, that's not bad. And let me tell you, it is worth it. This is a zen no, experience. No, shit! <laughs> I was about to say that it was a zen experience until you just yelled, oh shit, Rich, way to go. So I appear to be able to go up too, I'm not just gliding down. Yeah. I think you need a bit of a, uh, you need a bit of a momentum in, in order to fly up. There. Okay, okay. So is this game buying time while something else is readied, or... No, this is kind of what we're playing now. We have other things that we can play. We were thinking about playing. And... I just I, you know, wanted to see this. We're going to give this a shot. And I don't think this is going to carry us through a whole night. I can't imagine. I really cannot imagine. I can always play more Hand of Fate. Though if everyone hates Hand of Fate, there's always FTL. You know, we got... <laughs> we'll be fine. Rich was talking about getting in super hot. We have options. We have nothing but options. We have nothing but options. There's I... nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go. <laughs> I see I must have missed uh, this tip um, the other day when I was streaming. It's from True Blue Review who says, Hey, Jack, what do you think of Doom and Skyrim getting ported to the Switch? It seems like the main selling point is them being portable. But is it really worth rebuying, especially with Doom's uh, graphical downgrade? No. I don't know why you would want to play Doom on a Switch. Unless you, unless that's the only way you can play the game. Uh, you know, that's fine. Yeah. It's, I'm not, I'm not upset that it's available on the Switch, but it's not, right. it would never be my first choice. If you have Doom on the PC or any other console, there's no reason to rebuy it. Unless... You absolutely need to play Doom while taking a shit. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I've heard, ma- I, or I've, I've, I've heard of many people who love that Skyrim is now portable because apparently, the prospect of playing Skyrim while shitting is very popular. <laughs> I don't, I, I've never played Skyrim, so I don't know why that's a thing. But uh, Grandma Tarkin, too. No, you cannot do barrel rolls. It's just, it's just the stick. Just flying. Nice, Rich. And you see, like, that little point counter, and then as soon as you're clear from whatever got you the points, you collect those points, and you fly around and try to get more points. And that's it. (laughs) Yes, uh, Tetris Geek says, the goal of this game 
is to almost die as much as possible without actually dying. Yes. Do a thing that looks no. up. Yeah, you, Rich messed it up. Uh, that was not bad. You gotta do a thing that looks a, cool. It's a good run. Yep. It's a fine run. The game audio is annoying. Well, you know what? As soon as Rich is done with this run, I'll turn the game audio down a little bit. It's... There's no music. It's just wind noises and the clinky clinky of you getting points. Is that really that annoying? I, I find it very zen. It's totally worth three bucks, I gotta say that. This is totally worth three bucks. I, I already feel like I've gotten my money's worth. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't even pay for right. it. Right. <laughs> Alright, hold on. I'm just gonna turn the game audio down just a smoidge. There. There we go. I've turned it down a bit. It's down here. Huh? It's down here. Nope, death. Death De is down there. <laughs> It's, you know, it's okay if this game isn't appealing to everyone. It's it's very limited, but, you know, I think it's fun. Let's see here. Uh, what do you guys think of services like Miiverse shutting down and leaving many features of entire games unplayable? This is what happens when you have online connectivity. Rich, uh, this is why I'm a big advocate of single-player games and games not being tied to an internet or an internet service. This is something very important to Rich. He brings it up a lot. Uh, I, uh, my response is, duh, this is going to happen sooner or later. And it might happen to other things, too. So this is, it's a cautionary tale. It's a cautionary tale, my friends. Oh, nice. That was sick, Rich. You just got so many achievements. I'd play this game for 30 minutes and then never again. I could see that. I could see that. I can also see this being like a thing that a game developer made hoping that they could fit it into a bigger game. You know, like, ah, you know, what if what if in that uncharted game we had a wingsuit section? Let me let me come up with a prototype uh, wingsuit area. And they showed this to the people at Naughty Dog. Oh. And the Naughty Dog said, "No." Nah. Nice, Rich. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> Pretty happy about that. Yeah, that was good. That was a good point run. No, that would be way too much fun for an Uncharted game. Well, or a game of the like. You know what I mean. Boop. Goop. This would be a great way to get to different islands in an island hopping adventure or planets in a space game. Yeah, this could be this could be a really fun mechanic in a different game or like like th this is very similar I think to uh or, or this would be a different option in something like Breath of the Wild where instead of your little glider that just goes down like what if what if you got to like wingsuit from place to place? That would be awesome. It's been neat to see a tool assisted run of. Mm. A tool assisted? Where everything's pre. The controls are pre programmed. Oh, sure. Um, someone is asking in chat, and Rich does have. Uh, Dragon Mooney says, what about Steam? Entire libraries yeah. are connected yes. to an online service. Yes! Steam is a gamble, Steam is a risk. Steam is you don't a risk. own anything on Steam. That's why I always say when you have the option, buy things on GOG.com. Steam's a necessary evil because it's the only way you can get a lot of shit. But <laughs> uh, ooh, nice. So this game, these maps uh, are procedurally generated, but only when you leave no. the map area. So like, Rich is playing the same map over and over, but then when he leaves, like, like when he when he dove down, then a new map area got procedurally generated. But this map will stay the same forever. 
So Rich could find, like, the ultimate path in here. Are you sure it's, pre it's procedural, or are there just a number of different maps? Uh, I believe they said it was procedural. Did they? Okay. I don't want to speak too soon. I I'm not entirely I sure. I am fairly certain that they said procedural. Oh, God. Yeah, G and, you know, GOG is now offering many of the services that Steam offers, but you still have the option to download Right. A copy. But, you know, you can if you like achievements, you can do that on GOG. There's, you know, friend tracking and gifting and, and, and digital sales and all sorts of stuff that GOG is now offering uh, that Steam has, but also the ability to download and play without an internet connection. No. So... Yeah, I, I'm I'm with Rich. I, I and I'm double with Rich after watching the uh, the NoClip documentary, because uh, you know it's always fun to have a you know the uh, a nice little uh, it's it's nice to have a good guy, right? Nice to have someone to someone to root for. Uh, said the project uh, recently put out a statement on microtransactions and how their new action RPG won't have any microtransactions. <laughs> Isn't it sad that needs to be an announcement? <laughs> well, I almost thought that was overkill because it's like none of their games have had microtransactions. and It's not like they were taking a stand. They were just being a dick, which I'm perfectly okay with anyone who wants to be a dick to EA. But <laughs> Right? I heard, I have heard, you saw me, you saw me watch this, nothing about it when you walked in. Yeah, so yeah. It's not news to you, but that... Uh, this whole Battlefront 2, Star Wars Battlefront 2, mm -hmm. that Disney actually stepped in and, and, and told EA to cut it out. It, it is reported, and I don't think there is any, and I don't think we will get any confirmation, that Bob Iger himself called EA to say, knock it off. <laughs> You're messing with my brand. Right, right. Um, and... Uh, and yeah, and and as soon as that word came down, then oh, there's nowhere to go. There was nowhere. It was too late. I thought there would be an opening in a, there. It looked like there would be an opening in there. Quit messing with my brain. Yes, that's exactly what Bob Iger would say. Uh, and that is what caused EA to back off. And, and so you know, it it was kind of the 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 mass hate online wasn't immediately effective, but as soon as it reached someone higher than EA, then it became effective. Yeah. Which, so, you know, still effective. It shows you what EA thinks about their consumers. <laughs> no, and, you know, uh, there were there were other... Yeah, this one looks like puke. This one does look like puke. Find another portal or dive, man. Just dive to the ground. Looks like, yeah, it looks like you're going through soup. That's a decent blue. It's a, a soup. It's, a, it's more it, soup. This is like a cucumber soup. Oh, you, oh, you can do Oh, I thought you could do it. I was feeling it. So, is the best case scenario for Star Wars and gaming that EA doesn't cut their shit out and, and uh, people are really pissed and then when the contract is up, Disney decides not to go with EA anymore? That would be the best case scenario, yes. The, I think the real problem is Disney just doesn't give two shits about video games as as a branding opportunity. You know, they got the movies down, they got the toy line from that down, right? So, like, video games are an afterthought to them. Right. So, like, ah, give it to EA, whatever, I don't care, right? Until EA made a big enough stink. But eventually, someone who has Bob Iger's ear or someone up in Disney's ear will say, hey... This is, a, this is a more powerful branding opportunity than you realize. What if we made really good games kind of like our movies? We're making you know, good movies, right, and right. more toys to sell, and more opportunities for cross-promotions. And I go, all right, give it to someone who cares. I don't care. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> give it to another company. I don't care. Just make, make it so people don't bother me about this video game bullshit. And, uh, and we, yeah, we might get some good Star Wars games out there, which would be nice. Of course, that won't happen for 10 years, so... By that time, the heat death of the universe will eat us all, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Disney actually ended the entirety of Infinity 3.0 because it wasn't profiting enough. Yes. Their, their little amiibo-like yeah. yeah. game. Their Skylanders-esque game. Uh, though I'm sad uh, that that uh, you know a property of theirs that a lot of people enjoyed. A lot of people enjoyed those Infinity games. I'm sad that you know that property had to die. Ooh, this is a neat. Oh one. shit! I was looking at the chat. I thought I'd have more time to adjust. <laughs> I was wondering why you weren't pulling up. Uh, we did get a lot of good uh, background toys to use on our shelves because Infinity crashed. I think I think there's several things on the Nerd Crew set that I got uh, for a dollar. EA has said the removal of microtransactions from Star Wars is only temporary until they figure out a solution. What do you think they will do? Just lower in-game requirements for unlocks? I think they'll wait till everybody's forgotten about it and then it'll all come back exactly like it was. Yep. 100%. That is 100% what will happen. Blah. That is 100% what will happen. It will come back the second the gaming community forgets about it and moves on to something else. Uh, when's award, award season's coming up, right? Award season? Yeah, yeah, sure. Award season will give the gaming community something else to talk about, and then they'll just sneak them back in. Oop. Well, everyone's talking about game of the year. They'll be sneaking them back in. You know, everyone will get a free Boba Fett. Ooh, nice, Rich. Okay, first of all, you are applying for a job at EA. <laughs> because that is brilliant. <laughs> the free Boba Fett update, and everyone will drool over it, but uh, you have to agree to some terms and services in Boba, order to get Boba Fett. Boba Fett will have his new outfit. His, 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 his uh, escape from the Sarlacc outfit. Nice. Where he's, like, covered with goop. Escape from the Sarlacc Boba Fett. And if you Free. want if you want that outfit, you have to agree to some new terms and services, <laughs> which include the return of microtransactions, and everyone will do it and fucking love it. And they'll give you enough in-game points where it's almost enough to buy a loot crate. <laughs> oh no, they'll, they'll give everyone a free loot crate. <laughs> uh, one free loot crate and, and some bonus points. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so everyone, it, it's like the drug dealer giving out his first joint for free, right? Like, hey, here, kid, have some drugs. <laughs> We're so sorry. Have some free loot crates. And then everyone will start clicking and they'll see the fireworks. And they'll go, ooh, that was fun. The internet will be all over it. I gotta stop looking at the key after training. I had one. I was like all the way. I was like pretty high. I'm yeah. like, oh, I got time. <clears throat> That's not the case. They want to dump me right out into the action. If if you if you go through a portal, you're right in the action. But if you go down, yeah, yeah. then you get some, a little more time because you can just fly downward. Mm. See, uh, the internet will not care. Oh, is that cloud? Oh, that's cool. Oh, The internet won't care if they get to be Boba Fett. I, I'm going to go ahead and agree with Rich here. The internet will, will not kerfuffle at all if they get to play as a really cool character. I want to disagree, but EA has been getting away with this shit for more than 10 years. Yeah, they know what's up. They're not dumb. They're making money. They're making cheddar. Something that we were talking about on, um... Uh, wanted to, uh, something we were talking about a little bit on, uh... On Thursday was the, the reports that were coming out of the people at, like, uh at Rockstar and Take-Two, where they were talking about their uh, experiences with microtransactions and how insanely profitable... Oh! How insanely profitable they are. And in fact, you, 
you don't need a large user base um, buying in to loot crates. You only need about 10% of your user base doing uh, buying into loot crates. And a lot of your money, in fact, comes from just 1% oh, of, uh, of purchasers. Like, you, you have single customers buying tens of thousands of dollars worth of loot crates. Someone on, on Thursday was saying that they had a friend who worked for um, that Marvel online game. And they had two, uh, two users who each spent over $70,000 on in-game purchases in the Marvel game. Hmm. Isn't that insane? Mm -hmm. That's insane, yeah. Rich. There used to be a streamer, a rich guy, who would just... His whole streams, he would spend tens of thousands of dollars just on CSGO stuff. Really? And just open it and see what he got. That was his whole stream, was just opening boxes? Uh, yeah. Ugh. What do, what, come on, man. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> he would get drunk and buy tens of thousands of dollars worth of loot crates. <laughs> First of all, it's a brilliant stream idea. Because <laughs> then we get to watch the crates being opened. That, that's like a, that's like secondary cocaine usage. Like, I'll just watch other people take cocaine. Ooh. The dark days of CSGO. I want to get through there so bad, but I can't. You can't? Or you're just not good enough. Damn, Jack. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, just uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep it real here, Rich. You can't. Love that momentum a little bit. No, nope. no, nope. 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 definitely not. I need to start higher. Uh, like, yeah, I don't know. Are there, like, updrafts and downdrafts, or can you just fly straight? Uh, I've not seen updrafts yet. Yeah. Or downdrafts. Oh, yeah, that area just might be too thin. That could be a... Oh! I thought I was going to make it. <laughs> that could be a, a downside of the procedural generation, is some areas you just can't get out of. I believe Take Two even recently stated that microtransactions account for about half of their revenue. This is not going away. Oh yeah, that's why there's no, like, they don't care about Grand Theft Auto anymore because they have Grand Theft Auto Online. They don't care about new single player games because Grand Theft Auto Online is what makes them their money. It's depressing. Yeah, but like single player games aren't going away. They're just going to be smaller. <laughs> Or, or fewer and farther in between. They're shockingly addicting. Yeah. For, for three bucks. This is what I'm saying. I, 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 this I, is totally worth three bucks. I, I bought it and got about 10, 20 minutes in and I was like, ooh, this is fun. This is fun. Alright, new map. Ooh, weird. You're in Thor Ragnarok. Does it have VR support, Gino Suave? I have no idea. As we... Rich and I have no VR... things. Isn't that like a recipe for throwing up? This... <laughs> also... Uh, I, I, th oh, nice. Also, yes, that would clearly be a recipe for throwing up. My turds agree and said this could easily include enemies or courses you have to follow in the future. Uh, yeah, I could see some, uh, some mod support for this, giving us some, some sick-ass courses. Enemies, I'm not sure about. I'm not, you know, like maybe if it had like a, oh, you know, okay, so here's how you do enemies in this game. Yeah. You have some sort of uh, shield mechanic where you can't, God damn it. you can't uh, move, like you can't go up or down, but your shield comes on and you can bash through guys, but you need to time it just right. So you turn your shield on, you can't move, you bash through a guy, and then you take your shield off and, fl and glide again. <laughs> 
And you gotta you gotta find guys up on the mountain and bash them with your shield. Nope. Nope. Doesn't wanna work. You didn't do it. Didn't do it. <laughs> Rabbit Wolf says, just moving your head slightly in VR is a recipe for throwing up. Absolutely. Really? Absolutely. Uh, not making me want to put on a VR headset. Nope. Nope. I'm not saying every game needs a conflict mechanic, desperate pumpkin. I'm just spitballing some ideas here. Like, if there were enemies in this game, you'd have to find a way to fight them while gliding. And, you know, like, I wouldn't want to add, like, a gun or anything. Ooh, nope. nope. You know, like, I, I think that would take away from the mechanic. And so I was trying to, I was trying to think of a way... Gunfall. Gun... <laughs> To incorporate, like, to stick with the simplicity of the flying while also having some sort of uh, ability to take down. I, I like it just the way it is. Uh, Big Blue Fronted says, shut the fuck up, Jack. You're not a game designer. You've never had an idea that wasn't terrible. I got an idea that's not terrible. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Okay. You know, previously recorded was Jack's idea here. This the stream. The stream right here? Yeah. Uh, boom. Uh, I got an idea that's not terrible. How about a ban for 30 minutes? <laughs> I approve. <laughs> I approve. <laughs> Fuck off, man. <laughs> I've done the same thing, Jack. I've done the same thing. Eh, I do what I can. I do what I can. Sassy Jack, that's right. Sassy Jack. The 30 minutes seems light. Ah, I didn't want to make it like a perma ban. He didn't he didn't say anything like Whoa. Nice. He didn't say anything that offended my delicate SJW <laughs> sensibilities. He just knew he was just, just a jerk. A dickhead. Right. Oh wow. I'm exploring it. Okay, yes, that was a Canadian perma ban. Absolutely. Maybe I'm not exploring in there. <laughs> is corn now the ban corn? Oh, there is corn now. We got some new. Uh, hey, uh, we got some new emotes, guys. Who made them for us? What's the corn referencing? Uh, uh, <laughs> corn chucking. Someone, someone made a throwing corn. Look, you can see it over. Oh, while you're playing. Someone made a throwing corn emote, and I love it. I, I gotta, re I gotta remember who they are though. Hold on. I gotta remember who made us our, our corn emotes. Uh, H, uh, Twitter user H under uh, a complete hack. A, uh, a complete hack H A K. A Twitter user made us some new emotes. He gave us a, they gave us some corn. They gave us casual horse, which I love. They he actually they actually made a casual horse pixel uh, thing. No, no, there's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go. Dead ends. Uh, they made uh, they did they did make a new fuck bot, which uh, had some wrong sizes. So I need to fix that in Photoshop. And they did also make a biscuit, which I need to fix. So. Jack, there's a pretty good chance that guy you banned was joking. Well, then he told a bad joke and the ban stays. How about that? It's 30 minutes. Yeah, it's, it's 30 minutes. Highlander AK says, I'm H-A-K-L-O-L. Great. Well, then it was Highlander AK who made us our new emotes. And I love them. Casual horse. <laughs> what? what was the guy you banned for 30 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> The guy you banned was who made you the most. <laughs> then I would feel bad, yes. <laughs> then I would legitimately feel bad. Ah! <laughs> hmm. oh, I wanted that! I wanted that! Where was that? What? 
that opening. I... Oh, you gotta find it now. Oh. I wanted it! Oh! oh! Yes! That was awesome, Rich. <laughs> uh, see, this game is fun. This game is a nice. This is three bucks! It's three dollars. There this needs, there this game is less than a cup of coffee. Right? Mad wingsuit strats. Is that all? I think we have more emotes, too. What's your take on disaster artists? Might be interesting. Book's good. Yeah, and I don't know if I'm going to see it, because I still haven't seen the room. So I hey, don't... You probably wouldn't get anything out of it. Right. There's very little I would get out of it. Let me see. I think we have. Do we have other new emotes? We got casual horse. We got corn. What was the other new one? I thought we had another new one. So they want to know what the proportion problems were. They can fix them. The proportion problems? Yeah. But the emote. Oh, I can fix them. It was. It was. Um. The the emotes. Uh, Highlander. Uh, HK. As you, as you know the size. You know the size they need to be. But they also need to be perfect squares. And so you need to submit emotes in three different sizes: twenty eight pixels by twenty eight pixels, fifty six pixels by fifty six, and I want to say one. One twenty eight. I, I you 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 have the right sizes, but uh, your new fuckbot and your biscuit emotes, the frames were skinnier you even though you had you still had they were still like 28 pixels tall it was only 20 pixels wide and so that's just something i need to take into photoshop and manually change the uh frame size which i can do i just didn't get around to it this afternoon Keep getting greedy, Jack. Keep getting greedy. that's all right we uh, executive uh, horsewife <laughs> sorry i like that name executive horsewife Executive Horsewife, we can't talk about Justice League because I haven't seen it yet. We, you want to know what I think about it? We just we just did a half in the bag about and, it. And Rich literally just did a half in the bag about it. Also, it's super fresh this weekend, and so just in case we will be will we won't be spoiling it. But I'll tell you what, I am gonna see it over the break, and next week Sunday when we're both back. Oh, we'll talk the shit out we? of Justice League. Will we? There's nothing. There's. I'm, I, I've seen it. Yeah. There's not enough to talk about. Well, shit then. There's. There's literally. There's not enough to talk about. It's, <laughs> it's a shallow experience that film. Well then, hopefully I'll remember enough to try to talk about All it right. next week Sunday. <laughs> I got out of that movie. My brain was starving. Oh, I'm very sorry. That I, I am, as we've talked about a, a bunch, I am very excited academically to watch it, to try to uh, spot the difference uh, in directors. Uh, Colin from Canada has been sharing on Twitter some pictures of uh, Henry Cavall's yeah. mustacheless face. And who boy does it look funny. So I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> but I might try to go see it. I might try to go see it tomorrow. Just because I want to know what all the fuss is about. Definitely, you know, you don't want to see it on the opening weekend. But it's, it's already, uh, it's already uh, not doing super well at the box office. So I'm glad I didn't help contribute any to that. Henry Cavell? Yeah. What did I say? Did I say Harvey Cavell? Sorry. There's nowhere to go! Oh, I'm very, I'm very sorry. Academically, Injustice League shouldn't be in the same sentence. Uh, to try to figure out who directed what segment, I'm excited. I'm excited. Ah. You know, you know. now that someone mentioned this, this totally does need a race course. Yeah. 
This definitely needs a race course. With like shortcuts that have more tight spaces to fit through, but it's a shortcut if you can make it through. Right. Yeah, that'd be great. This section's boring. Oh. Yep. Uh, Thor did a, has done a better box office than the entirety of the Justice League. Guardians of the Galaxy 2 did a better box office than the entirety of the Justice League. All of the greatest DC superheroes combined couldn't beat Iron Man 1. Which, yeah. A relatively unknown superhero movie. They've ruined their brand. Yeah, they've completely ruined their brand. That's right, Spider-Man has performed... Well, but that's Spider-Man. Everybody likes Spider-Man. Even though... That was almost a... That was almost a brand ruined. The Spiderman brand. Well, that's like... Saying you couldn't save it, but... Well, they... They... Yeah. Sony saved the Spider-Man brand by taking their hands off of it. <laughs> right? <laughs> And as soon as they took their hands off of it and everyone knew that Sony wasn't making Spider-Man anymore, we all came back. We all came back in droves. Oh. That's true, Len Flakosinski. Ten years ago, uh, the average moviegoer wouldn't know that much about Thor, Iron Man, or Star-Lord. Yes. And now they are outpacing arguably some of the most iconic characters in all of fiction. I don't know. I don't know if millennials give a fuck about Superman. I'm not saying people give a fuck about him. I'm saying people know who they is. Which is a powerful marketing tool. Ooh, Poipo World. Y you know who Betty Boop is. Would you be excited about a Betty Boop movie? <laughs> Sure, millennials. <laughs> First of all, millennials intellectually know what Superman is. I'm saying <laughs> it doesn't mean much to them. I guess they might have had the Justice League cartoon growing up, but of course they did. They know who all those characters are, and I'm sure have some sort of nostalgia for them. Also, to answer your question, if someone made a Betty Boop movie, I would be there right away because I'd be curious. Like, what are you making a Betty Boop movie for? You, you're, you're okay. Well, I'm talking to a man who bought a Barbie board game. So. <laughs> Don't, aren't you saying you would at least be curious as to why someone is making a Betty Boop movie nowadays? Sure, but I wouldn't be excited about it. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Not gonna happen. <laughs> you see those little nooks? Yeah. And you want, you want to go through them. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. I don't know what's over here, but I'm, I did it. I did it, and I shouldn't have. Nope. And I died. You were on pace, but then you second-guessed yourself, and then when you third-guessed yourself, you died. Nice. No! Oh! <laughs> Ooh, Jennifer Tilly as Betty Boop. You'd almost have to do some sort of uh, 3D animated Betty Boop, right? It would have to be a cartoon, because no one's going to get those proportions without looking like a horrible monster. I only know Aquaman from people joking about how bad an Aquaman movie would be. That Yes, that was the running gag for a long time. Because it's Aquaman. No one cares about Aquaman. I was really excited when they were going to do a Popeye in 3D animation. That's true. That f that fell through. Yeah, well, that's because yeah. the the, tr the trailer that uh, what's his name Gendy Gendy Tarn did, Tarnofsky. He did a really good like not not trailer but uh like like they did uh, with a, Deadpool. A proof, proof of, of concept. concept. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That looks great. Instead, Gendy's making Hotel Transylvania three. Oh. 
Is that what they have him doing? Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's what's making the money now. Adam Sandler telling bad vampire puns. But that's what makes the money. Though, to be fair, Gendy did get to do, uh, you know, a, a proper new season of Samurai Jack, so that's something. Well, see, he, he was involved. Then. Yeah. Okay. Gendy Tartakovsky. Thank you, Lloyd Beats. I know. That's a, that's a tough last name. Uh, rabid... Rabid Co Wolf says those Hotel Transylvania movies aren't bad. They're not the worst. And Karen likes them. Speaking as someone who watches a lot of kids' movies because I have children, I have seen the worst. There is the worst stuff out there. But uh, yeah, they're not the worst. They're bad though. <laughs> they're not. They're not. Ooh, that's a pretty world. Is it snowing? I think so. Yes. Nice. This one's huge. Nice. List of the worst kids' movies? Oh, there's, there's too many. I'm trying, I'm trying to think. Uh, Norm of the North. Putting that on the list of the worst kids' movies. Uh, Do I have to have seen it, or can I just make some like presumptions? Uh, you you have to have seen it. Okay. So I can't throw out like the nut job or then you know what the nut job not the worst yeah not the absolute worst it's bad but not the oh, oh. god damn it that should have been an opening um the emoji movie yes that's pretty bad not the even the emoji movie is not the worst um I usually, I usually, um, after we watch those kind of bad movies, I refuse to let them into the house, and so I forget about them. <coughs> oh, pardon. Uh, pretty easily, even though my kids remember them. Like, they, they were obsessed with watching Boss Baby just because they saw the posters, and I was like, no, we're not getting Boss Baby. But Jack, it's a baby who's a boss. It's a baby, I know, and they they were so excited about that. Ooh, Nomeo and Juliet, Mal Radkel. Yes, that is just the worst. Nomeo and Juliet. Karen was so excited to see that. Was she? I think she just liked the pun a lot. <laughs> I had to say that in the theater. Rich, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the worst. Uh, oh no! You know, for the for those who are saying uh, monster trucks, that that wasn't the worst. That was cute. In fact, like if I would have seen monster trucks when I was a kid, I would have loved that. Did you see monster? Of course, you didn't see monster. No, trucks. of course, you're, I didn't you're, see you're, you're you're an adult, <laughs> Rich. Um, you know, monster truck is the story of an a uh, of like a, a creature who inhabits a truck, and it's like a teenager who's g who's got a cool monster truck that can climb walls and shit. Yeah, it's live action. The kids loved it. That's not the oh, Tetris Geek wins. Yes, uh, I'll get to that in a second. Tetris Geek, monster truck is a neat premise that kids like. Uh, a monster, some trucks, cheesy comedy. I I. I can, uh, yeah, in live action. I, I I can endorse Monster Trucks as a movie. They did it right. They had some fun with monsters and trucks. The absolute worst is the Smurfs movie. That is the absolute worst. Those I have not seen. The... Is this even for kids, or is that just nostalgia for adults? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious. That's a fair question. Were they made as kid movies, or they made as... Remember the Smurfs? I believe the intention was to be a little bit of both. Okay. You know, good for the kids, but, you know. So they don't do, like, slightly adult humor with them just because they know the audience is older. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. There, there's some winks. There's some winks, but, you know, still generally a, a kid audience. Smurfette, you're the only girl, huh? Oh. <laughs> Shit like that. <laughs> oh, give me that out! Don't give me a opening that's a dead end, you game! That's the joy of procedural generation, Rich. Ah! Oh. 
Yeah, oh, any of the Minion movies. Yeah, the Minion movie is, the, is also just the worst. Obviously, I have strong feelings about Minions in general. Uh, the first, like, the Despicable Me movie is, is borderline the worst, but any of the sequels, absolutely the worst. Steve Carell doing much these days? Seemed like he was everywhere, and then he wasn't. Suddenly. You know what? He was everywhere. Uh, so besides doing the voice work, he is uh, he appears in a bunch of like indie dramas now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Just legit acting work. Which good for him. Ran across uh, the other day. I completely forgot he did it. His Get Smart. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's actually a cute movie. I don't remember much about it. I saw it. I saw it. I, th I probably saw it in the theaters. But. No, I, I enjoyed watching reruns of the show when I was young. Oh sure. He wants an Oscar? Yes, he does want an Oscar. And he deserves one. He's a fine actor. He's a fine dramatic actor. Isn't that what comedians do after a while? They can act in comedies and then they decide they want an Oscar? Yeah. And then they, then they try to go back to comedies and it never quite works out for them. Robin Williams. Yeah, what comedies did he do later in life? <sighs> he did them. Most. They're forgettable. <laughs> well, they're forgettable, yeah. Besides his early work, and then his 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 a uh, his a uh, good acting work. Something with him being a dad, but a world's greatest dad. Is that one of that's a, that that's a drama or that's that... a, that's a dark comedy. That's okay. the Bobcat Goldthwait movie, but uh, directed by Bobcat Goldthwait. Okay. Nice. Man. Mrs. Oh, Mrs. Doubtfire. Classic Williams. Is that later Robin Williams? I don't know. I don't know what counts as early or late Robin Williams. I guess Williams. he's gone up and down with drama, comedy, mm. drama, comedy. Like, where does Jumanji fit in all that? Because I fucking love Jumanji. <laughs> like, The World According to Garp, I don't think that was much of a comedy. That was an early I want to be a dramatic actor attempt from him. Oh, I don't even know if I remember that. Ah! Ah! Oh, that was awesome, Rich. That was awesome. That, that was technically awesome. You got awesome points for that. Uh, oh, yes, I saw that. Uh, Rich, did you see the Deadpool 2 teaser? No, no, I didn't. Oh. Deadpool 2 is uh, doing some decidedly strange marketing. Uh, so besides this teaser, which uh, started off as just dead... Oh. I, I, I had no momentum to yeah. get through on the other side. Yeah. I had to dive and hope for the and, best. And there was nothing there. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so the, the teaser is mostly Ryan Reynolds doing a Bob Ross impersonation. Okay. In, in the Deadpool outfit. And uh, and we get little snippets of, uh, of the new movie. Uh, besides that, they... they uh, they actually partnered with Good Housekeeping to make a Deadpool-centric issue. And this is a real thing fr from actual Good Housekeeping. Huh. There is a Deadpool issue of Good Housekeeping. Oh, I, ca I can't believe you made that. Uh, which is very strange. But uh, yeah, I saw the teaser. It looks fine. Uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to see where they go with it. I know the original... Who left? Uh, for the director? director I think? Yeah. But it, there's a there's a, a lot of momentum, and a, there, a, the the problem is there's now a lot of hype, and so I, I hope it it now uh, it matches up to our expectations. The first movie had the comfort of no expectations. Ooh. Awesome. Nope, 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 nope. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, awesome. Nope, nope. <laughs> nope, yep, nope, nope, yep, nope, nope, yep, nope, yep, yep, nope. 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 Nopers, yepers, <laughs> nopers. <laughs> huh. So yeah, you know, hopefully new Deadpool uh, will meet the expectations that it now has. I can't believe you survived that. I can. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to see how they tackle Cable. Uh, and and I'm, I'm hoping, I'm just hoping the gang gets back together. I want to see more of 
Mesononic Teenage Warhead or whatever her name was. She was great in the in the two minutes of, of movie she was in. Right. Nope, 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 nope. Maybe dumb, dumb, but awesome. I wonder if Jack is just a child no. in an adult's ah. body. I just have a lot of joy in my heart, and if that's something you can't deal with, then that's something you and got. It's Negasonic. Negasonic? I believe. Teenage Warhead? I'm just excited about things in general, and so, you know. I'm not gonna apologize for that. Ooh, this is a neat map. Yeah. I assume you can save these. Uh, I also assume that. So who made this? What? Who made this? Ow! You want me to look it up? Here. You want me to look it up? Sure, I'll look it up. Is it the cluster truck people? Oh, no. Maybe? What's it called? Super Flight. Superflight.corn. Ah! <laughs> All right, let's go to the Superflight press kit. Why is it asking for my email password? Are you going to email me a press kit? I don't want you to email me a press kit. I just want to know who made you. Yeah, I don't want that. Usually they have a little, like, about me section on their website. Uh, this is Grizzly Games. Mm -hmm. A very passionate but small team of three students. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, they did good work. And I hope the $3 game makes them a lot of money, because it's, it's certainly worth three bucks. Right? If I stopped playing this now and never touched it again, it would have been worth three bucks. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm with you. Grizzly Games. I, I would have. I, I'd like to know a little bit more, but apparently, in order to get their press kit, I needed to enter my email password. Right. And I was uncomfortable with that. Your email password? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if it, if, if it was like a Google Drive thing where they were going to share a document with me or something. Oh, fuck. But. Surprised I've played this long. This is actually fun. Mm -hmm. It looked ve it looked very interesting, and I like I said I liked the uh, the twenty dollars. You said twenty? I thought this was three. I played I played it for twenty minutes. Okay. And enjoyed it. It is three dollars. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Yep, that was just my brain uh, mixing up some wires there. Give us your password and we'll test it. <laughs> the press kit link is to Google Drive. Google is asking you to sign in. Yeah. I still don't like it. That's one, two, three. <laughs> Four, five, six. Rich, don't tell them. <laughs> it's eight characters long is all I'll tell you, not to spoil it. Thank you, Cinnamon. Now everyone knows my password. <laughs> Just finished watching Hunt for the Wilder People. Pretty good movie. Oh, I still have to see that. That, that Taika is a talented director. Taika Watiti. something interesting man give me something interesting uh highlander aka i will check uh i will check my email when i get home and uh i will add your updated emotes when i get home it's uh, there is actually a little bit of a process and it takes some time to uh to uh go through the approval process anyway so that we probably probably wouldn't have them by tonight anyway but i will i will check when i get home thank you for fixing them that will save me a little bit of time. And I just I just like the emotes. What I'm probably going to do, Highlander HK did give us an updated fuck bot emote. Yeah. Which does look very nice, but we already have a fuck bot emote. So what I'm thinking is we have a... 
we have some emote slots because uh, you know now people who subscribe to us or we have to vote for their favorite fuck body mode well uh there there are now subscription tiers you know you can subscribe at a normal okay. tier at okay. the ten dollar tier or at the 25 dollar tier right yeah and yeah. for people at the higher tiers you get a an, a special emote and so I'm thinking that maybe we use the fancy fuck bot for the fancy people. So everyone can still have a fuck bot, but anyone who, you know, who, who goes up a tier in subscription gets the fancy bot. That's, that, that was my thought, at least. We'll see. This game in VR is like the ultimate diet plan, isn't it? Blah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Super flight and VR, I lost so much weight. <laughs> also, all my teeth fell out. I make a fortune. I'm just gonna make a game that just just spinning. The game is just spinning. I'll make it for VR. And it'll just be a diet loss program. <laughs> I'll fucking make <laughs> millions. <laughs> I can't officially call it a diet loss program because I'd no. probably get in trouble for inducing bulimia in young girls. Uh, so, so I just call it the, the tilt to world game. The, the game will be called Play This After You Eat. <laughs> uh, I love it. Chat, believe it or not, we actually already talked about Battlefront 2. We did. Uh, they're, well, they're complaining. Uh, they're comparing now uh, our subscribers to microtransactions. No, that's not at all like a microtransaction. For one, other than the emotes, you're getting the exact same service, whether yes. or not you subscribe or there, don't. There, there, there is no pay to win while watching previously recorded. False equivalency, my good sir or madam. Someone thought they were being clever. Yeah. So, we'll let it matter. Bits are the microtransaction component of Twitch. Eh, no. Not really. Ish. But that's, they weren't our idea. That's right, Captain Nitpick. There is no win when watching Prereq. We're all losers here. <laughs> Zing. Zing. I, I got so distracted by how right how good that was that, that was, I that was a good zing. I lost control. That was a fine zing. <laughs> subs don't get uh, subs don't get no, subs get a they get a pizza roll next to their name. They get a they get a thank you at the end of the stream. And they get our appreciation. Cause they they just help keep us going. That's what the subs get. Every other streamer has bit cups to encourage the flashy things. Oh, I've seen that. And yeah, we could enable stuff like that where like we could have a little thing that says like, ooh, our top bit contributor to make it like a competition. Right, right. Chat, and I think that's obnoxious. I'll be honest with you. Like, whatever works for you as a streamer is what works for you as a streamer. I don't like that. I think that's obnoxious. We didn't really have a choice in enabling bits. Uh, it, it, bits were thrust upon us. And if that's how you feel like contributing, we're, we're, we're fine with bits. But, you know. Even... Oh, awesome! But we're also just happy with your time. We're just happy that you're spending time with us, chat. Totally gonna buy this game. Looks really great for three dollars. I'm, I'm telling you, there's something to this. Three dollars is a steal. There is something to this game. Whoa, whoa! What is going on here? What'd you do? What'd you do? Up, up was down and down was up, and oh. the world didn't make sense. I'm so <laughs> I'm very, very uh, sorry, Rich. It was just like, insert controversial thing here. What? 
How could you say that? <laughs> I'm offended. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Becky got played. Says, uh, finally tried Avatar: The Last Airbender and was pleasantly surprised. Unlike real anime, oops, sorry, it makes sense. Has logical story progression, good pacing, character development, and world building. A plus. Okay. I know that's a popular show. Not seen it. That was a popular. That was a long-running Nickelodeon cartoon, Avatar: The Last Airbender. I do. That's one of those uh, things I want to hate watch because apparently the M Night Shyamalan live-action adaptation is just terrible. Supposedly, I I haven't seen that either. Right. It's it's on my list of things like ah yeah, one day, one day I want to oh, ah, almost one day I want to give that a try. There is no movie. Oh, sorry. Sorry for anyone anyone who's a fan of that show says there is no movie. There is no movie. Hmm. Uh, ben Vereen, no. I don't know anything about when shirts are back in stock. Contact at redlettermedia.com. I know nothing about the shirts, though I might want to steal one. Because I don't, I actually don't have an RLM t-shirt. I don't either. And it's like... I could take one, right? <laughs> I mean, I might get an angry email later, but I'll be fine with that. <laughs> uh, Anonymous says, Jack, how's the diet going? I've made it from 222 pounds down to 193. Nice job, Anonymous. Thanks uh, to your leading example. First of all, congratulations. Oh, that was nice. Uh, I've, I've hit a, a small stagnation right around the 190 mark which uh i'm pretty comfortable at i'd love to get down to 180 or at least in the 180s but also we're getting to uh we're getting towards the end of the year which as a freelance is a restart button oh nice uh as a freelance video producer this is the time of year that uh is actually the toughest uh especially uh, late October uh, and all of November because this is the time when every company needs to spend whatever money they have left in their advertising budget. Because yeah. if they don't spend it, they don't get as big a budget next year. And so this is where a lot of my work from the year comes from. And I've been so busy. I've still been on diet, just not 100% on diet. And so I've stagnated around the 190 mark. But... Um, but, and you know, like now uh, yep. holiday season is coming up. I'm going to do my best. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to do my best and just keep trying. It's, it's a journey. Dieting is a journey. It never ends. It never stops till you die. What's your favorite game controller of all time? Uh... Currently, I love my uh, my Xbox Elite controller. I think that's one of the most comfortable controllers I've ever used. The Elite is just well built. I appreciate the construction. It feels yeah. solid. Yes, and that like that rubber on the outside. I, it feels like it feels like I, it, I never wanted to leave my hands. That's the, not my favorite controller. The layout, I'm not particularly married to, but it's fine. My favorite controller of all time is the GameCube controller, hands down. No. You know what I loved about the GameCube controller? The, the thumb things? The th then not the thumb things, the shoulder things? No, well, the shoulder things were great, but the tactile experience of knowing where the X and Y were. You know, you had that big A button, right? And then those yeah. tiny ones above that, because you knew just by feeling what button you were pressing. It's not like the Xbox controller where it says, like, press the Y button. Which one's the Y again? Is that is that the one on top? Is that the one on left? You know? Hmm. I, I love the tactile experience of the GameCube controller. Hands down. Uh, had that awkward S Z button. The, it had the awkward Z button. It also had the awkward C stick <laughs> that you had to yeah. use for your camera. It had, it had some definite faults. But the that the button, the A B X Y button layout, means it wins hands down. And I loved the, the, the half press shoulder into the full press shoulder. A lot of uh, 
a lot of modern controllers still don't take advantage of the half press like they did. I loved that half press. A lot of games didn't take advantage of it, so... Uh, that's another fault, right? Oh! But that is, that is my favorite. The uh, GameCube, hands down favorite. Though, special ups to the Xbox Elite controller, which just feels amazing. No! Oh. What's the rules of the game? Uh, don't run into a wall. <laughs> Get more points for flying close to things or through holes. Yes. But the only real rule not to die is don't let any part of your body touch anything. Go for a high score. And, but it's all arbitrary. Go for a high score or just fly around. Do whatever you want. Like I just did. I just ran into a thing. <laughs> I meant to do that. Yeah. Like I got more points, but I also wanted to fly through there because it was awesome. Right. Right. Are there different levels, races to this? There are different levels. Uh, we've been, we've actually been to a ton of maps. Uh, they're they're procedurally nope. generated, so they ah. they kind of have a similar feel, but they are different. There are no races. I think that would be a, a race would be a great addition. Yeah. Okay, you get yourself a little like timer leaderboard. Well, it'd be nice if it had some of these things. In the game's defense, it's available for three dollars. <laughs> So, boom. Agreed. Agreed. Let's see here. Taint Misbehaven says, Hey, guys. Thanks for all the streams, and I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving. Quick question. If you could master any musical instrument, which one would you choose? Let's see. First of all, happy, thanks happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Chicks like the guitar, right? Uh, I think chicks uh, enjoy any musical instrument. Uh, they, yeah. I, I think uh, anyone, not just chicks, uh, they're you know what they're attracted to, Rich? Mm. Talent. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> well, and also I think uh, having mastered an instrument means that you uh, have at least some sort of dedication to you. And so, like, there's also that where, like, ooh, this is a person who can stick with something. I like that. Uh, if I could choose uh, one instrument to master, it would be the piano. Yeah? Yes. Uh, only because that would also lead into, like, synthesizers, which can make any instrument. And with modern, compu <laughs> modern computers means I could play anything if I knew how to play the piano. That's how I would analyze this shit, Jack. I'm proud. <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of you, Jack. Um, well, damn it. You thought outside the box, and it felt good, didn't it? <laughs> There's nowhere to go! That would be me. Though, and being uh, someone who has uh, played a few instruments and played in bands, I can tell you the most fun I ever had was when I was a drummer. For several years, I played the drums in uh, punk and rock bands. Yeah. And... Uh, I wasn't terribly good at it, but there were few things more satisfying than just beating the shit out of my drums every night. So, while mastering the piano makes oh, a lot of- Oh, come on! That's- Look at that! That's horse shit! Procedural generation, my yeah, friend. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sunday, yes, I did become a drummer by lying to people. That is correct. Uh, for for those who people who don't know the story, uh, when I, when I was in uh, high school, uh, I I met up with a few people who were uh, who were musicians, and they wanted to start a band, but they needed a drummer. And uh, over at friends' houses, like I had played the drums every so often, and I, you know I could hold the beat. And so I, uh, I kind of lied, and I said, hey, I'm a drummer. And they go, really? I said, oh, yeah, I'm totally a drummer. I'll, I'll drum with you guys in your band. And, uh, and I said, but unfortunately, uh, I can't, uh, I can't, you know, I just broke my drums. And they go, really? So I, said, I can't practice anytime soon. It's going to take me ooh, a while to get a new set. But, hey, after that, if you guys want to get together and jam, I'll be in your band. They said, oh, sure. And, 
So I then uh, scraped together all the money I could for the next month and bought the cheapest set of drums I could. And, uh, and that's how I uh, joined my first band. Oh. All right, new rule. No more caves. I can't see the exit to. And Gino Suave points out, played so hard I broke my drums. Anyone who's ever played the drums knows that that's not how drums work. Like, you might break the head of your drum, but then you just replace it. You don't need an entirely new kit. So to be fair, they were also bad enough that they didn't know I was lying, and so it worked out. So, uh... Exactly, more, more, better. I'm totally a drummer. I just don't have drums or drumsticks or play the drums. No, and I, so I taught myself how to play the drums, and I was in several uh, punk and rock band, mostly punk bands, because that's the easiest thing to play the drums for. Just and it was great fun. And I, I did become better through the years. You know, I taught myself how to play the drums and just practice, practice. And... Oh, I thought that was a. I thought that well, it was. Oh, what? Ooh, I, I like this scheme. This blue and yellow. This is a pretty world. And then eventually I, I switched over and played uh, the bass, a guitar, and uh, and keyboards. A little bit of keyboards. Was not terribly good at any of them, but I had a lot of fun. So piano, and then drums would be a close thing. Oh shit! As a drummer myself, shit, I'm shit, shit, the shit, shit, shit. Jack's casual description. <laughs> Do you do fine, Rich? You do fine. No, I'm not. Oh. No, I'm not. <laughs> Does Rich have dementia? What would make you say that, Chad? I think you you started a sentence and then puttered out. Well, probably because I was doing some right. awesome stuff in this game that I'm not doing now. <laughs> Uh, Highlander HK, no, we're, I, I think actually uh, as soon as uh, I have the proper biscuit emotes, uh, that's all of our slots at the moment, and I actually had to get rid of one. I got rid of Doom It Up. <gasps> People weren't using it very often. I thought they would appreciate uh, the casual horse more. I can always bring it back. We can always bring back Doom yeah, It Up. Yeah. But uh, currently, uh, as soon as we get the biscuit head, we will be all full on emotes. So thank you. Thank you, though, Highlander HK. I love them all. And of course, now that I said I've gotten rid of Doom It Up, everyone's going to say it was my favorite emote. I used it all the time. No one ever uses the Tim emote except for me when I watch other people stream. That's the only emote I ever use is the Tim face emote. That one's staying forever. That one's mine. That one's just for me. They don't really know who that is. Nope. It's just me. It's just for me. <laughs> oh, also, speaking of, uh, of Thanksgiving, uh, both Rich and I oh, will, yeah. will be out of town. Yeah. For, uh, for Thanksgiving, and so there will be no stream on Wednesday. Just uh, as a, a heads up. Oh, nice. This is a badass level. I know. No! Can I? How do I save this map? Save current map, yes. Nice. Um, so, yeah, very sorry. So there will be no stream on Wednesday and no stream, uh, I mean, this upcoming week at all. As both Rich and I will be out of town. Uh, and But we'll be back next Sunday. I assume we'll be back next Sunday. Yeah. But yeah. We'll be back next Sunday with, with stories to tell. Thoughts on the 